Hello, my name is Joe and welcome to another edition of Joe's Technology. This is just a quick vlog update for the channel. Um, I've been kind of busy with some other stuff and so I actually have a few videos shot that have simply not been edited yet. And I'm trying to get to be better about editing and, and putting stuff online. But I thought I'd let you know about something interesting. As I test out more different pieces of you know, hardware, which include different video cards and drives and SSDs and other stuff, it occurred to me that uh, rather than tear my own computers apart and, you know, use them for testing, I think I've probably reached the point where I need a formal test bench. Uh, the, the purpose of a test bench, if you're not aware, is that uh, basically you have a um, an open bench where you can screw things down just as you would, but unlike a regular computer case which closes it off and is difficult to get into, the test bench is specifically designed to make it easy to reach all the different little components that are on the board and the drives and other stuff. Um, and it's just meant for testing purposes, you know, uh, so, so that you can, you know, run everything and uh, have it easily accessible for changes. And these things are intended for something where you're changing things out frequently in order to try them out. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a Liam Lee um, T60B uh, test bench. I like these because they're aluminum. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> there are test benches that are cheaper and they're made of acrylic, but I'm thinking that they're not going to be durable enough for what I do. Uh, I'm kind of abusive with my stuff, so I, I've got to have a metal frame. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, T60 here showing up. In fact, see, this is my order screen. Oh, I just plunked down some money on this stuff. As you can see, my, my channel has no sponsors, so when you see me demonstrating equipment, it's usually stuff that I've bought myself. In fact, well, not usually, it is. <laughs> so far, nobody's given me any stuff to work on of theirs. Uh, I mean, eh, I've helped out a friend or two with a few odd projects there. Every once in a blue moon, I used to go out and do work, but, you know, where I work now, it's a conflict of interest if you work for anybody else, and, and they, don't, they don't like it. Um, so now I just kind of give out free advice. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of out of the uh, repairing other people's stuff business, and uh, I, I just work where I work. Okay, but uh, no, I thought to myself, you know, I'll, I'll get a nice um, motherboard, and as you can see, I picked a generous power supply, and I'm going with an R5 1600 six core. This is the, you know, there's the 1600 and the 1600X of the R5s, and the Ryzen 5s, you know, they have both a, a four core version and a six core version. And uh, so this is the cheapest of the six core, plus uh, AMD has their own version of hyper-threading, although at the moment, uh, whatever their brand name is for their processing escapes me, so I, I forget what it is, but it's basically two threads for each core. So when you look at it in your computer, it'll say, I see 12 logical cores that I can do work with. So I'm thinking this would be a really great test bench for a lot of things, you know, various different uh, operating system testing and other kinds of stuff. Oh, and then the last thing, this guile memory. All right, I will admit it. I've, I've, all my computers are not flashy. They don't even have, you know, the little windowed side panels on them. I thought just for once, I mean, this is a test bench, so there's a couple of things I'm trying here that I've never tried before. The EVGA power supply, this will be the very first fully modular power supply I've ever gotten. Because I'd always thought to myself, eh, it's kind of a ripoff, da 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 da. But I'm going to try this out. I mean, since it's a test bench, there's no reason to have like a bazillion cables all over the place if they're not all plugged in at the same time. So I thought, okay. I will try a fully modular power supply. This will also be the first gold power supply I've ever bought. So, I mean, I've always kind of cheaped out and bought bronze. So I'm going to try gold. I'm going to try gold. And I've bought other EVGA supernovas before, and they've been great. So, uh, plus, not only that, but this was uh, EVGA's uh, supernova was the cheapest fully modular gold power supply from a brand that I actually trust. You know, there, there are some other brands out there... <laughs> You know, my, my personal favorites, this is just my personal preference, are EVGA and Corsair, of those two. Although, of the two, they're, they're both good quality, EVGA is usually cheaper. <laughs> usually. Um, oh, and then the memory. Like I said, I'm, I'll admit it, I only bought it because it has LEDs. <laughs> I could have gotten probably like $10 off if I got the memory that didn't have LEDs, but... All right, I will finally get something with LEDs on it and try it out. So my test bench will light up and it'll look cute. Um, 
So that, that should be fun. So I'll have fun uh, testing different things. Uh, now, currently here on my channel, I have I've got uh, one Windows 7 computer, uh, and then the rest of all my machines are all Linux. And I keep getting people who will ask me for help with Windows 10, but I've been you know, not really a fan of Windows 10 because of their data collection practices and some of the sneaky stuff they do where they, you know, override user settings and then they try to call it a bug. And, you know, they're, they're really just doing it purposely and there's just a lot of privacy issues with Windows 10. However, um, in the interest of being able to provide tutorials to people, I have to admit, I've been considering getting a Windows 10 system. And then it occurred to me, hey, you know, this test bench, I've got these extra hard drives laying around. I could have one hard drive that I'll just designate as the Windows 10 drive and hook that up onto the test bench. And so whenever I need to do Windows 10 related stuff, just plug in that drive and presto, you know, I can do things there on the test bench. And the rest of the time, unplug it, and it just kind of sits there, because uh, Windows 10 is not my daily driver and probably never will be. The rest of the time, I'm, I'm working in Linux, uh, because Linux is free, it does what I tell it, uh, it works very well. It's just, I only have Windows, really, for gaming. You know, there, there are some games that, are, that still play better on Windows. The good thing is that the number of games that play good on Linux, and natively, is growing every day. So I'll have fun... Uh, making videos that demonstrate the performance of uh, a lot of Linux stuff on the the R5, but mm, yeah, potentially we'll, we'll demonstrate some uh, Windows 10 stuff on there as well. I'll, I'll just have to debate whether or not I go ahead and finally get a Windows 10 license. But the good thing is, is that since it'll be the test bench, it's not a machine that's running all the time, because again, this is just a personal preference, but because of the things that Windows 10 is known to do and could potentially be doing I don't want this thing running on my network I just don't um, just creeps me out oh well that that's just a personal preference um, so if you're curious about my parts list and the things that I've been picking up uh, I actually have a uh, section on PC per picker and I'll include a link in the description of this video so every time a friend of mine asks me Joe would you help me uh, pick parts for a system I create another parts list and then I link it to them so this is the uh, R5 test bench, and it shows uh, all the parts that I picked. And as you can see, I have already purchased mine, so they're they're on their way. They're on their way. Um, and that's just the R5. I mean, like I said, you'll notice there's no storage listed here, um, and it's just a test bench case. Uh, in fact, here we can get a better uh, look at this. As you can see, it, it, the bench is designed to be open, so the board will be there, and, and you can get at all the parts. This is not meant to be your your daily driver, the thing that you use every day, you know. So I'll, I'll have a little video where I put this thing together. Oh, these are like optional fans and other stuff, but I don't think I need any of that silly stuff. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's what it looks like when you 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 know stick in the drives and the power supply and other stuff, and it's just strictly for testing purposes, so that you can easily get at the uh, cards and and other things, and so. I'm just looking forward to uh, trying out different things here on this. Oh, and see, here's the little motherboard that I picked. Whoops, that's not a very good picture. Oh, well. Uh, well, we'll see it up close when it arrives. And eventually, let's see, now, if you notice the price on, on that last one, this is why I'm, I'm planning on building an R7-based system. So I'm going to go with Ryzen 7 because, you know, I would love to have an 8-core processor but knows the price. I mean, my eyes are bigger than my wallet, so <laughs> I'll have to save for this one because um, there are no sponsors for this channel. Everything you see is something that I bought. So I'll save my pennies up and probably build this beast uh, later over the summer. But my little friend, the R5 test bench, this will get put up in very short order because, well, it's a lot cheaper. Uh, like I said, I don't need to have uh, a case, you know, well, it's uh, the test bench case is not free. I mean, as you can see, it's like seventy-six dollars. But uh, I, I don't need to have drives or other stuff because I have those parts lying around. And you'll notice it doesn't include a video card either, because um, I I have several video cards here that I can. Because uh, I'm always you know buying upgrades and things like that, so I've kind of amassed a little collection of cards. <laughs> I'll just use those. So, uh, if you would enjoy seeing how Ryzen performs in various different environments, eh, Windows and Linux included, yeah, I'll probably get that darn Windows 10 license. Ooh, it, it burns me like garlic burns a vampire. 
to even admit that uh, I might consider getting Windows 10. But like I said, it'd just be for testing purposes. Um, look forward to some of that on the channel here this year. <laughs> and I'm, I can't wait till my, my R5 system shows up and I can put that bench together. And then I'll have a video of me uh, assembling the test bench and uh, firing it up for the first time. See you next time.